Hello Sagittarius, welcome to my channel, The Mother Speaks Tarot. My name is Allison. My channel is new, so please subscribe and hit the bell button. Also like, comment, share, all of that I would appreciate very, very much. Thank you. And thank you to all those who are already subscribed. I'm almost to a thousand subscribers. I'm very, very grateful. I love you all. And to everybody who views, thank you so much as well. I am also an author. I'm writing an action-adventure love story on superhero twin flames. Um, it's called Perception, book, uh, the two yet one, books one and two. You can find links in the de description box um, to purchase my books from Amazon. You can find links to view trailers that I made for them. I'm reading book one aloud to my Facebook friends and followers uh, live and then uploading them to YouTube. You can find links for that. I've read up to chapter 10. You can find links for my author's page on Facebook as well as my personal wall. Um, you can find links to some lives that I did on Facebook a few years ago where I tell my life story. Um, you can find a link to my friend April's new astrology channel. She just did this excellent uh, reading on the, the blue full moon that we had on Halloween. It's very powerful. And um, if you would like a personal reading, I'm offering those now. So if you would like to contact me to book one, that information is also in the description box below. Um, if you are attracted to this reading, uh, that's when I feel it's best for you. There's, it's timeless. This is, um, this deck here, uh, it doesn't have reversed meanings. If the card is upside down, it means that the energy of the card is not fully manifested. And depending on the position on the, on the card, um, I'll, I'll be able to let you know what it means. Um, I read major arcana cards as messages that are directly about your divine blueprint. And that is the plan that you made before you incarnated as the being that you are to learn certain lessons and things to raise the vibration of your soul. I see the minor arcana cards as messages about your free will. And uh, since I, this is the Celtic crossbred, and I read it a little differently, the positions, than, uh, than other readers. So I'll explain as I go. And here, right in the center of everything for you at this time, Sagittarius, you have adjustment, justice. In other decks, this is called justice. This is the major arcana card for Libra. So this could be centered around a Libra in your life, or this is, you know, this is about balance, uh, beginnings and endings. You'll see here that this is the Alpha and this is the Omega, and what this represents is, is several things here. She's got the Sword of Justice, okay, and she's got the scales, of course, to balance things out, but she wears this crown, this headdress of uh, the ancient uh, goddess, ancient Egyptian goddess Ma'at, and uh, before Ma'at was a goddess, um, she was a concept, okay, to simplify a concept for the, the people, they turned her into a goddess. And basically what it's about, the, this is, her concept is the beginnings and endings of life. The balance, how everything balances out in, in what some people would call karma energies, karmic energies. Okay, so you'll see that she is right side up. So um, this is about justice. I'm being shown the, the greenness of her skin here. Uh, it's about healing. It's about balance uh, of life. Okay. It's also, it's, it's about truth. Okay. So this is what is um, at the heart of everything for you right now, Sagittarius. And um, because she's a major arcana card, this is a major... Um, lesson, a major subject in your divine blueprint at this time, okay? Now, the energy that is directly affecting here, which is at the heart of everything for you right now, is the Knight of Swords. 
um, all knights bring change, so he is a, a change bringer. He, all knights have the um, aces in their hands, so he's, he does have the sword of justice, the ace of swords right here, but he has this extra one here. He is, um, he's Gemini energy. Sword energy is Libra, Gemini, and Aquarius, okay, but he in particular is Gemini. Now this knight goes too fast. It's just too much. That's why he has two swords. Look at how fast he seems to be flying. He, he is unfocused. His mind is random. Okay, he starts something and then he moves on before he completes it. Okay, I just had this in the Leo reading that I just did. And um, so something, there is a change. Could have something to do with the Gemini. But there is a change coming to this balance, this too fast energy. And swords are all mental. This is thoughts, words, logic. Okay. So some sort of idea or decision is going too fast here. Okay. It's it's not thought out very well. This could be a person. This could be a masculine energy that is bringing some sort of instability to the balance and justice uh, equilibrium in your life. You want to have this divine balance, this divine equilibrium. You want justice. You want healing. You want all this stuff. Um... Could even be a, a Libra. But this night, this masculine energy of moving too fast is what is affecting this. Now you'll notice though that your adjustment here, she's right side up. She's withstanding this energy. Okay. Now the next energy that we read here is uh, what's at the root of everything. And this is, in other decks, this is called Judgment. You might be more familiar with that. In this deck, this is called the Eon. You'll see that this is right side up. You want a new era in your life. This is about the ending of one era or Eon. Because an Eon is um, a measure of time. And uh, this figure behind here is the old Eon. And then this one that you see that looks very, that is see-through, and it looks like a child. Very innocent. That's, that represents Horus, the new eon that is now forming, but is still too young to really be in charge yet. Uh, this is about resurrection, the beginning of a new era. A lot of the time, uh, when I see the judgment card, I hear the phrase, it's time. For some of you, this is some sort of legal matter. Because this is adjustment, you know. Uh, she's wearing a blindfold and she's, you know, justice. Okay. And directly below her, you have judgment. So some of you could be involved in a legal matter and judgment is coming maybe you want it to come too fast maybe someone is trying to push it maybe a gemini is trying to make it come too fast okay but this is a lot like the world it's the end of a cycle and the beginning of another one but like i said this could be the judgment in some sort of legal case that you're in this is the energy that is moving out of your life at this time, um, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn energy. This one is uh, more Capricorn. You'll see that this is right side up. Every time I get this card, I like to say that I don't believe in failure. I believe in lessons. There is no failure. There is only lessons. 
The reason this card is called failure is because in other decks you'll see a farmer um, standing there with his tool. It's usually a hoe or something, and he's just sort of standing there admiring the fruits that are growing on on his bush that he's got over there that he's but he's not tending to it okay they're not ready to harvest um, but he's just standing there looking at them and what this card teaches is diligence in in taking care of your your earthly fruits of life your you know your harvest you have to stay diligent. You have to continue to water them. You have to continue to weed them. You know, maybe hoe them. He's got a hoe. Um, you know, get dirty. Get in there. Get out the insects, uh, the slugs or whatever, okay? Now, this, this card is right side up. So, this is saying that this, at some point, you were being very diligent. This energy is moving out, Okay? Also, um, when I say the word diligence and I see this justice and this judgment um, as an ex-paralegal, uh, you, you see that you must do your due diligence. When it comes to a legal case, you must present all the evidence in the discovery portion of the case uh, that is called due diligence. So if you're involved in a, in a case... You've done your due diligence. You've provided all your information. Um, if it had been upside down, I would have said that uh, you had begun to, and then you stopped, and now it's on its way out. But no, you did it. You did your due di diligence. And now this part of your case is over. It's moving out of your life now. For others that are not involved with a legal case, there's a part of your life that you were handling and um, you're, you're not anymore. You were working very hard at something or you weren't because this is sort of the reminder that you have to be diligent, okay? Maybe there was something that you didn't, um, that you had been working at and then you stopped, and now that energy of that stopping is moving out because we have this ace of discs. We have a seven and then we have an eighth. Eight, not ace. Now these are, for me as a reader, these are two future cards. Okay? And I go down and around, so I read this one first. And I'll let you know which one will happen first and which will happen after. Now this is another Libra card. Peace. A decision will be made. Judgment is coming. Okay? It's something that you're not quite seeing yet. This is the moon. The moon represents um, things that you can't really see. They're kind of in the dark. The two of swords represents a crossroads or a decision that needs to be made. It's a balance. It's... um. It's kind of, you're kind of blind to what's, what decision is going to be made at the moment. And uh, see, they got Libra right there. They're showing me how it's on the tip of that little dagger there. It's like um, justice is hanging in the balance is what I just heard. Okay. So swords are all about uh, logic. They're all about, <clears throat> pardon me, they're all about the mind, intellect, okay? So we, we use logic uh, almost as a rule when it comes to legal cases, okay? I just heard that this could represent a speedy case as well. Now, here... Here is the eight of discs. This is learning a new skill or trade. This is working very hard. This is a uh, Virgo energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, this is happening first. Most of the times, this would be uh, a more immediate future, and this would happen afterwards. 
you were not doing everything you were supposed to do. Now you are. Then you're going to have the decision. The decision will be made. Okay? It may be that you have to learn some new skill or trade, but this is also about working diligently, working very hard at something, at your skill, at your trade, or perhaps at, at this, uh, this legal case or this situation that has to do with justice, judgment, logic, diligence. Yeah, I'm just feeling a legal, a legal case very strongly, okay? And doing this type of work could be new to you, which is the working at a new skill element of this card. Both of these cards are right side up, which means, see, like if they had been upside down, if one of them had been upside down, as future cards, I would have said that they are still a possibility. But these are right side up, okay? So you're going to work hard, you're going to do your dil due diligence, and a decision will be made, and justice hangs in the balance, okay? Now, this is Libra, and this is Libra. Right on top of each other. And then we got seven and eight. Yeah, that just seems very balanced. Very Libra energy here. Uh, justice. Justice strives to keep things fair. Balanced. Now, this is your hope card. Now, if this had been about some uh, romance or something, I might have said this is a hot and heavy one with this name for lust. Sometimes people go after things very lustily. You know, but this has something to do with um, a Leo for you, I think. But... You're hoping, see, in other decks, this is called strength. Where you're having to be very strong. So you are probably hoping to be very strong through this. To summon your strength from the very depths of your soul. And you will. This is right side up. You're supposed to be this strong. And the other element to this is usually we'll see an angel very gently managing a lion. And you'll notice that this woman looks very relaxed as she has the reins on this kind of scary looking lion here. She doesn't look scared at all. This is an Archangel Ariel card. Ariel is the Lion of God. She is very strong. And she knows how to tame the lion within. Okay, so some of you may be hoping to, to have the strength to get through this. You may be hoping for uh, a Leo. You may be hoping... To, to do this well. Okay. And, um, yeah, a lot of the times this means taming the beast within. Sometimes it's, it's taming your lust. It could even be sexual lust that you're trying to tame. You'll know what resonates with you. Now, this is your environment. This is cups energy. Focus. There we go. Cups is emotion. It's love. Uh, it's And water itself um, in the mysteries and the esoterics um, represents the subconscious. And what is the subconscious but intuition? So cups is also very much about intuition. I'm feeling that you might be a little confused right now. You might be dealing with some addiction 
which is why you are hoping to be strong. Um, if you, Sometimes when people are feeling stressed, they may drink a little bit more than they need to. They may do other things. Now, you've got two sevens here. The seven of discs and the seven of cups. So I would pause this or after this video, look up angel number 77. You have the two of swords here, and I haven't read this yet, but you have the two of wands. So you might want to go ahead and look up angel number 22. So this has a Scorpio influence. A Scorpio could be involved here. We've got Venus here. Venus is the ruler of Libra. Okay. Venus is the ruler of Taurus. The sun, whenever you see a circle and a dot, that represents the sun. The sun is the ruler of Leo. And you've got the Hierophant here, and he is also Taurus. Okay, just pointing that out for those of you who like to know about the, the rulers and the signs, because the, it might speak about who is involved in this case. And who is involved with each of these cards, these aspects that's going on for you right now, okay? So these can be options, but I'm feeling that you're probably a little confused, which is why these discs are, you know, you're getting back to work, you're learning something new. When you learn something new, you might feel a little confused. There's a lot of things to learn. This is a seven, this is an eight, you know what I mean? So it, I just feel like you've got a lot of different things going on right now that could be confusing for you and you're feeling rather emotional and you might be um, having a, an extra glass of wine or, you know what I mean? Okay, so this is your fear card. This is the two of wands and it is not fully manifested. Now, the first thing I want to say is I got to point out to everybody every time they get this card at this time. See, the thing is, is that Mars is in Aries. This is Mars. This is Aries. Mars is in Aries and it is retrograde until November 13th. Mars is the masculine. Venus is the feminine. Like I said, she rules Libra and Taurus. So she is very present here. So you've got a lot of the feminine going on here. Now, this has been telling me that the masculine energies in you, everybody has feminine and masculine energies. This has been telling me that your masculine energies have been being worked on. As a fear card and as an upside down card, this is telling me about the, the meaning of this card that you find right from the little book that comes with it. Most of the time, I'll say that this is the second part of creation. You, you've got the idea and then you have the goal and it's very passionate, it's very powerful. Uh, you could be at a crossroads, which does speak to this, okay? These can both represent a decision to be made, being at a crossroads. But because it's upside down, and because it's in your fear section, um, I'm being told that it means what it says in the book that comes with this deck. And this, these guys right here, these wands, which is your energy, Sagittarius. Of course, this is Aries, but this is fire energy. This is you, Leo, and Aries. Okay. Now, I just want to show you because 
The masculine has been getting worked on. I've been saying to everybody, look at these. These are called Tibetan Dorjas. Okay. And what that, what a Dorja is, is a lightning bolt. Okay. And I've been saying, look at their faces. They kind of look crabby, which is what's been going on, which is, which is what Mars is. And Aries is, is the ruler of war. Aries was the god of war. Uh, Mars is the masculine. It's all about aggression. Um, the, the, um, the distorted masculine had, has been getting worked on. So all the things like war, aggression, anger, uh, being controlling, those are distorted masculine energies. They're being worked on so that the masculine is, is actually supportive, protective, um, giving us the strength to be who we are and allowing the feminine energies in us like art to be supported. Okay, that's sacred masculine energies. But this right here, what is a lightning bolt? What can a lightning bolt do? Okay, and, and it's saying that this is not fully manifested yet. But you're manifesting it with your fear, okay? Now, the, the dorges or the lightning bolts, what they signify is destruction. Destruction as a beginning of creation. So you're afraid of the destruction manifesting in order to create. This can also represent harmony of power and justice. Okay, that's what the little book says that comes with this deck. So, it's not fully manifested just yet, but destruction can be scary. So, I totally understand why you would be afraid of some sort of destruction as the beginning of creation. I can totally understand that you might be afraid of the harmony of power and justice together, because this type of power can be destructive in order to create. But it's upside down. Okay? So, there may be nothing to worry about. And it may just be that this is, you're feeling this. Because your masculine energies are being worked on. Now, this is your outcome. Like I said, this is Taurus energy. Taurus is ruled by Venus. Venus is the feminine energy. Even though this is a masculine person that we see right here. This is a masculine energy. This Hierophant, his, um, his counterpart is the priestess, the high priestess. She's the feminine. She even looks like, like that's her right there, kind of. Okay. Now, in other decks, he is represented by the Pope. He represents things like big business, um, conventional ways, uh, um, what's that other word? Conservative ways, traditional ways. This could be marriage. This can be a teacher. This is a scholar. This is someone um, who could be like, see the Pope. In other decks, it's represented by the Pope. The Pope is the head of the Catholic Church. That's a very old tradition. It's very, uh, you know, and it, he's a scholar. This is a scholar. This guy doesn't look like the Pope. He looks, to me, he looks a lot like Merlin. You know, uh, other, represent, uh, other examples would be like Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, Gandalf the Grey, you know, even uh, Dumbledore and Harry Potter, that kind of guy, you know, even Yoda, you know, I'd say Yoda as well. Somebody who is um, an authority on um, 
knowledge that as humanity or whatever species he is, uh, you know, like Yoda, um, the, the accumulation of knowledge this person is an expert in, this person is learned, this person is a teacher of these things. So for some of you, this could be marriage. Uh, this could be uh, getting involved with big business. This could be a teacher entering your life. This could even be someone like a judge. Okay? And of course, this could be a Taurus. Because this is the, the major arcana uh, for Taurus. It's very interesting that you have Libra and Taurus here, right side up from the major arcana, both ruled by Venus. Okay. Now, this is the underlying energy at the bottom of the deck, but more Taurus energy. And this same moon of things that you cannot see just yet, see the crescent moon right there? So this is Libra with the moon. This is Taurus with the moon. Isn't that, isn't that nutty? Not nutty, but I mean, that's, I just, it's cool. I think it's cool. Now, this is the card for success. You can see that it says success. This is discs energy. This is earthly energy. You're going to be successful at this diligence that you're doing. Okay? I, I don't think that you have a whole lot to be afraid of. I think your masculine energies are just being worked on. You know, you might be a little confused. But you've got the strength to do this. You do. You've got the strength to do this. And this is what's going to see you through. You're going to be successful, and you're going to be successful because of all the good stuff that you've done. This is six, the number of love for me as a reader. Um, this is saying, oh, look at you. They just showed me. Here's Venus, and here's Mars right across from each other. Oh, that's so cool. Here's the little moon, too. Oh, well, yeah, the moon. and Well, it's all cool, isn't it? But I call this my boomerang energy. Uh, card because uh, this this also has a Libra element to it in the rider weight uh, you'll see a figure handing money to two people and they, they've got a scale and the scale is very much of Libra balance um, the the concept of ma'at of karma beginnings and endings but also energies balancing out okay and so oh dang Sorry, getting all excited over here. All right. Um, yeah, so again, there's that energy of balance, of karma. All the good things that you do. If you're charitable to people, if you're nice to people, because you are, because this is saying it. You're nice, you're charitable. All the good works that you have done are going to come back and balance things out for you. You'll be successful because of it. Okay, you are going to reflect on your emotions afterwards, and the wheel of fortune is going to turn for you. Okay, oh, whoa, whoa, then you're going to be really super flipping happy. Okay, the sun is the happiest card in the deck. See, anytime you see a circle and a dot, that means the sun. Yes, that is the symbol for target. I just noticed that the other day. And you're going to have a new beginning in your earthly life. This is the divine seed to be planted. You may be taking root somewhere else. You're going to have a very happy and um, firm foundation. See, there's the sun right there. Whoa, then a brand new beginning in love. That's the holy grail. Oh boy, and a happy family energy as well. Okay, happy ending with your family, your earthly family. You're going to have a big change. You're going to have something to do with a Scorpio. 
I like maybe a phoenix moment, but a change that is definitely part of your divine blueprint. You're going to have this beautiful victory. Yeah, things are going to go well. I don't think there's anything to worry about. I think this whole thing with Mars and Aries retrograde is just really working on everybody. But we are becoming better people for it. And the masculine energies are, I just, I just heard they're grateful. Uh, masculine energies don't want to be viewed the way they've been viewed. They want to be sacred masculine again. So, all right. So, whew, quite a reading here, Sag. All right. How much uh, control do you have over this situation? I gauge from the number of major arcana to minor. And you have one, two, oh, three, and four. Almost forgot the eon down here. So that's four out of ten cards. So there's a whole lot of this, especially at the heart of all of this, that is part of your divine blueprint. You are learning a lot right now from this. Uh, a lot of stuff that you're supposed to be learning. And so, you know, this very well could be a teacher. This very well could be a marriage. See what I'm saying? So, uh, some of you, you might want to marry a, a Leo. Um, but I, I see success. So for those of you that this is a, a, a legal case, things are going to be fair. You're, I think you're going to be okay. You know, sometimes it's uh, a little daunting having to do this due diligence stuff. But you're going to do it, and you're going to get through it. And I, I, the success card right here, I, I just think everything's going to be fine. All right? Just don't forget to um, learn all these lessons that you came here to learn since they're part of your divine blueprint. All right? This is divine strength. This is divine knowledge. This is a divine uh, time. And this is divine balance. And there you go, Sagittarius. I'll see you next time.